All right, another little, little video. Let's get this out of the way. Right. Um, I purchased these TCXOs on AliExpress. 10 megahertz, apparently. What they're supposed to be. Um, I am going to test them, and I'm going to see what they actually come out as being. Um, let's turn my phone to get on, get it on up a little bit. The um, they didn't come with any information about the pinouts, so I had to do a little bit of research online. And I just noted it on the side here. No connection, ground is that corner. That's pin one there. And it's done as a dip package, so that's one, that's seven, eight, fourteen, um, and eight is frequency out, and fourteen is five volts. At least I believe it's five volts. Um, there's 3.3 volt and 5 volt versions. No, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some testing with that. I'll basically just ramp the voltages up and see what it reacts like. And um, but I don't believe they run anything more than five volts. So that's what I'll be doing. I won't be going any higher than that. I don't want to just blind them up. Um, basically, got these when I, my um, fluke unit had the issue with the OCXO. Um, and basically, I was thinking to myself, well, in most cases, a TCXO is good enough. Um, unless you need super high precision, you know, then sure, you need an OCXO. But the one that fluke was giving me a lot of trouble, and I, I did actually manage to fix it in the end, which is quite good. But um, at the time, I said, well, I bought myself a um, OCXO from another one, which I've done in the, another video. Yeah, I did a video for that. And um, I also bought these at the same time. Some TCXOs because I've I've had other bits of gear with TCXOs in and they've been absolutely fine. They've been close enough, you know. You get a little bit more drift on them, that sort of stuff, but it's not a huge amount, you know. Um, and so I said, well, I'll get some and I'll do some testing on them and to see how they go. Um, obviously, I need to hook up the power, so let's get some power. Let's see, you want five volt supply, so I'll go straight to that. Actually, I'll do variable supply. Now. Do variable supply. Uh, voltage, you don't want that to start too high. I'm going to start 3 volts, and I'll start 2 volts. I just want to see what it's actually doing. So, here's the other. Get my Tektronix scope going because I need the output from that to drive my other stuff. So. So I believe it is 5 volts, but um, let's see how many tricky that is not shorting anything out. Gotta be careful with that. So my Tetronix scope runs through to my frequency counter because the Tetronix has got an output on the back which is buffered um, from the input. So channel 2 actually basically you know passes through and um, means that you can do testing quite nicely um, it's hooked up to it. the case should be negative anyway so uh, to be careful not to touch that voltage pen All right so I think we're in I don't know if I should use my tripod to try and get all this in view. Hmm. Maybe. Turn the power on. Well, it's obviously oscillating. And that's at 2 volts. Wow, that's quite impressive actually. So 2 volts, it's oscillating, and there's a frequency. Um, my counter still warming up, so I probably can't rely on that. But I'm just amazed it's actually going at two volts. That's, that's quite impressive, actually. I'm, I'm surprised. Um, so let's go up by so half a volt. Amplitude's increased. Frequency has got closer. Yeah, let's try this, eh? All right. Hopefully you can see this well enough. It's not a great angle. Let's just try and do that. Maybe that helps slightly. Let's have a look. Maybe. I think it might be slightly worse. Yeah. 
We'll get there. Is that gonna do it? Uh, I suppose. All right. So it's at two and a half volts. I'm getting 1.6 peak to peak, and it's almost on frequency about 200 hertz low. It's actually closer. It was at two volts. So let's just do the two volts again. So two volts was 1.2 volts peak to peak, and it's about 600 hertz low, fluctuating. So it definitely doesn't like two volts. Two and a half volts is better, but still not great. Three volts. Right, three volts looks like the minimum. That's now sitting bang on 10 megahertz. Um, let's try and find that threshold. Okay, about 2.7. It starts dropping off. So 2.8 is the absolute minimum this will run at. That's 10 megahertz coming out now. Exactly. Um, let's just see if I can increase this digit range. So it's 2.8 volts there, 2.9, change it slightly, 3, okay, seems to be stabilising around there, 0.1, yeah, so 3 volts looks like the stable minimum on this thing, so I'm guessing that's like a voltage range it will work on, so 4 volts, yeah, 5 volts. So I'm going to run at 5 volts. So obviously everything is still warming up, settling down. My frequency counter won't be bang on. Because I've only just turned on, you know, 5 minutes ago. So um, it's not had its warm up period. But it will still show roughly what the actual unit is running like. So we're getting 3.5, 3.6 volts peak to peak coming out of it. So, um, but yes, that is the waveform it's generating, which is quite interesting. That's not exactly a uh, sine wave or a square wave. <laughs> Mind you, probably won't get a square wave, I don't know, but anyway, that's what it's doing, which is quite interesting. I might actually have a look on the other scope and just see what that thinks of it. And see if they get the same waveform out, that'd be interesting. Um, Let's drop this voltage down so it doesn't change the waveform shape. It changes aperture, it doesn't really change shape. Uh, I think I've got some noise around which is affecting that frequency count. It's jumping around a little bit. So let's turn the other scope on and pick up some noise. I might try and add some filtering to my DC and. Um, AC supplies somehow. Anyway, let's hook up the other scope. I won't be able to see the frequency anymore, but um, I'll be able to see the waveform. So let's drop it down here. So on here it's looking more like a square a square wave, which is interesting, eh? You know, you're getting a very different waveform appearance compared to the Tektronics. Let's turn channel two off. Don't that one in. Yeah, but there is that ringing there, but that's that has been my probes and stuff like that. So this is if I take that off completely, what we're going to get apart from a whole bunch of noise. Yeah, but it got some ringing there, and okay, so it works. Um, this is saying 10 megahertz, but you know, this doesn't have a good reference in it. It's it's not close enough, um, and it doesn't have a 10 megahertz input either, so you can't even do that. Right. So let's try the other one. Test the other one out. Just want to make sure that everything works before I place the feedback because uh, I always tend to check. Sometimes you get something and it doesn't actually work. You think it should work, but it doesn't. Let's turn the power supply off from that. Then I'll go back to the other scope and see what it comes out as. Ah, oh, bloody. Boots on these slipping around.
Okay. Same waveform at least. So it's going to be able to have a scope. So you can see it. Um, so yeah, same waveform, same shape, which is interesting. You know, so it could actually be my Tetronix scope's not working as well as it should be. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if things what 40 years old now. I don't know, 35. It's pretty old. Um, this one's frequency is a lot closer. What the hell is that frequency? Let's have a look. It's um, 1 hertz, 1 hertz. Half a hertz out. It's 0.5 kilohertz. Uh, 0.5 hertz, sorry. I think I'm reading it right. Hertz, one hertz. Yeah, 0.5 hertz. Which means the other one was out by 1.5 or 1.6, wasn't it? 1.6 hertz. Um, but right now, I'm not running my counter off the um, off the rubidium or anything. It's off its own oven oscillator. So um, and so that will still be warming up and settling down. Um, and that focus is actually changing slightly. It's like it's drifting downwards slightly. I think it's becoming a little bit of noise, but that's about, no, it's settling. So it could still be that this is settling anyway, but yeah, they're not bad. You know, there is an actual uh, um, adjustment hole on them. Let's just put this back over here. Um, show you this one. And so there's actually a little adjustment hole in there, so if necessary, you can actually open it up and tweak it. Um, and the fact that they are showing a difference, well, I might actually do that. I might power them up, leave them running for a while and um, get my rubidium set up on my counter and tune them just to be absolutely sure that they're right but then I might not bother until I actually get to use them anyway because um, you know, they drift over time anyway but that's what I need to do so you can see the frequency out slightly but, um, yeah it's like half a hit yeah anyway well you're only cycling one second let's do a 10 second cycle on that And we'll see what it comes up with. I have to wait 20 seconds because obviously the first sample might not catch it all correctly. Um, and this year looks pretty close. We'll see what comes out. There you go. So that's after that's the 10 second sample time. So it does averaging anyway. So yeah, I mean it's working. They work. That's the main thing. 